okay so um i'm back with another video on how to use my basketball templates or, or my sports ball templates this time i'm going to do a basketball in photoshop i'm probably going to do maybe the softball one too i did a video recording on it previously but i didn't like it so we're probably going to do it again um and then i'll upload it once i do it again if i could get it done tonight then i will but if not then you'll get it sooner rather than later make sure you stop by and look at my cricket one um for the basketball um i hope i helped i probably didn't but i am going to do other videos of other balls in cricket because just because the basketball one didn't the reason why the basketball one didn't work was because of cr cricket's printer parameters so the other ones may work because they may fit within cricket printer parameters printing parameters but i won't know it until i actually do them but in this one you know we don't have any print parameters in in photoshop so we don't have to really worry about it and uh having to deal with that but um i'm going to show you what that means in this one so uh i just like sometimes to actually for you guys to see me and then know who you, who's talking behind the camera but i'm probably going to turn the camera off and then just work because it's hard to look into the camera and speak and look at the screen at the same time so i'm gonna just uh i just want to say hi so you guys can see me and then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and jump right into getting this done all right Okay, so first we're going to start by um, uploading the template into the into the in, to the software. I get the question all the time of when you purchase it from the website and you get some of it and not all of it there's always an email that follows and if you don't get any of everything in the download because the file is so big then um, go in the email and download it so you can get everything there's only so much that it could give you via the download if it's a big file and most of the time it is so let me look up basketball here okay basketball template and you should get it comes and you get the safe area which is in PEG, png you get the actual um blue part that you see here which is like the full slice of the basketball you get uh, affinity designer affinity designer is what i was using when i first made this uh, design you can do this in affinity designer affinity designer costs only like 50 bucks and now they probably run in a sale where it's half price and it's essentially the same as using photoshop it works essentially the same way i probably will do another video on how to do this in affinity designer if you have affinity designer and i like affinity because it's only one price and it constantly update and you don't have to right now i'm showing you in photoshop and yes i pay for photoshop every month and it's not really cost effective but i like photoshop too then you get it in a jpeg then you get it in a png with all four slices then you get an svg in all four slices and then you get silhouette and then you get a pdf of instructions so when someone when you guys email me or message me and say well i can't open it or i can't something or i don't have all the files i know what i gave you so this is what is all included for the amount that you paid for the basketball. So I shouldn't get any more messages saying I didn't get such and such because you got it all. Okay. So I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm actually going to use a PNG because I want to show you guys all the, the, show you the way that I do it from this point. Okay. Now, I've already completed this particular ball. This is, I think I posted a TikTok video of what the ball actually looked like when I got finished, but I'm gonna show you how I got to that point. Okay? So, um, 
if you're doing it from this perspective, this is what I do. And this is a PNG. Select what you're looking for and I hit the eraser tool. It says it need to be rasterized. Just erase all of that. Just erase all of this. You don't need it. It's erasing everything at the bottom too. Hold on, let me make this smaller. Actually, you don't even have to erase that. Let me show you what you need to do. We need to grab the quick selection tool and just select all of this. Should fix itself. There you go. Okay, now you've gotten all of these. You got it like this, right? Once you've cleaned everything out, then, okay, let me close this up. So now I'm working with just this one by itself. Did you see that? Let me do it again. Let me do it again with another one. So you do your quick select tool, quick select your tool here. I trace it again. And I hit Control J, and that will give me that slice all by itself. All by itself. I don't need anything else. Just that slice, okay? Um, and you keep doing that until you separate them all. Now, the other way of doing that is place in bed is to just select this by itself. Okay, and then you will have to kind of look back to see how uh, each one is set up. So you got one that's set up like this and then control J to duplicate that. And then you got one when you rotate it. Or my favorite edit transform flip vertically and horizontally and then you have this and you just keep going until you have all the layers that you want so I'm just gonna duplicate that link delete that one. Oh nope I need that one <laughs> I need that until we get finished. I need this one. These are the ones I don't need. Delete that and delete that one. Okay. So essentially what you're using these for is just to set these up. You're going to say control J and you get another one and you tell it edit and then go to transform, flip horizontal and then that one matches that one and then you say control J and then you, flip, you do that and then you do what you did the first time and you say edit 
transform, flip vertically, and then flip horizontally. I just looked over it flip horizontally so now we're here now these four slices is like the first of the half of the football so if you so if you want to do the entire football you will just repeat this process for the other side of the ball so um and like I said we don't need this back one anymore and now we have these in separate slices okay I usually name and since this particular ball that I'm working on she only wanted four pictures on the ball so I named it you know uh, left slice middle slice second right slice and right slice or whatever just so you know or slice one two three four or whatever so you just know which slice you're working on and how we get to that now um, my next thing is always measure your basketball i say this in every video measure your own ball i usually use the ones from walmart from top to bottom they're usually 13 inches uh, but you could be using another ball or a mini ball or something else you need to measure for yourself i cannot give you measurements because you have to measure for yourself if you're buying the ones from Walmart, in my in my experience, they're about 13, 13 and a half inches from the top of the ball to the bottom of the ball. I usually do around 13 or 13.25, 13 and a quarter, because we're going to stretch it as we're putting it on the basketball. But that's in other videos that I've done. I've said the same thing over and over again, so you're probably tired of hearing it at this point. So with that one i'm going to go back and i'm going to enlarge it to i think i got i think i got three of these on a page together so i'm going to select all three of these And I like to work in inches so if you right click you can change this into inches versus trying to do it in pixels because I have no idea what pixels they're talking about I use 13 by 19 no I'm sorry 11 by 17 paper and I think this is 11 I said no I think this is 13 by 19 let me change my let me change my back so we can work in 11 by 17. Canvas size. Yeah. So 11 by 17, that's what size paper I use. And you could get about two to a um, to to a page and so let me make these make sure that they're 13 inches tall Six. It don't look that size. It looks like it's taller than that. And why it looks like it's taller than that, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. How do y'all 
are bigger. They are bigger than what they're supposed to be. And I want to show you how to get it the right size because that's important. And figure out why they're not the right size. Now I'm saying 20 inches by 18 inches. And now I'm saying 13 by 6. Okay, to kind of walk you through what I just did, because I know I got really quiet just then because I was trying to figure out why it did what it did. So let me explain what I just did. Over here, when you select, let's do this one. If you select the slice and then you go to properties, which is these little buttons right here, and you go to edit content, it's going to select just that one piece that you were working with. It's going to put it on a different page so you can work with just that. And that helps when you have a whole bunch of stuff on the screen. But in this particular instance, we don't. But this helps. Now, it's telling me what size this one is. And the way we get here is you right click and you can tell it what you want to work in. I really don't like working in pixels, so I work in inches. And I just told it what size that I want it to be. Now... I will say this I like to hold shift and pull from the corner because then it keeps everything proportionate and it makes sure that my uh, my everything stays the way it's supposed to be so here we are with, with this one right here and it's done so once you change whatever you're going to change you go to file and you go to save when you do that it saves it on this side so now we have it saved on this side the correct size that it is supposed to be now I'm not going to show you how to decorate the entire ball because once I show you twice it's the same thing all the way around so you don't really need a three hour long video on me de decorating this entire ball I'm going to or this these four slices of the ball because it's going to decorate too okay so um this is what we're going to do so i know you want to know well how did you get here how did you get this like get to this point let me see can i zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it how did you get to this point okay first and bring in the photo that the customer wants you to work with uh, it's just a rule of thumb of mine that I tell customers to send me the best photos that they possibly can um, I don't take I don't 
allow uh, pictures of a picture unless they can get it really, really, really clear. And um, I don't allow screenshots, which is that which is essentially a, a picture of a picture. But you know, people actually have photographs, and then they try to take a picture of a photograph. Screenshots and, and photographs I really don't like because they really deplete the clarity of the picture and you want it to be as clear as possible you want as many pixels as as possible because it plays a very major role when you're enlarging these pictures uh how they will look now if your customer says look this is all i have can you work with it i just go ahead and give them a small disclaimer that it will be distorted it will be blurry it will be pixelated if that's fine with you then I'll roll with it. They say, yeah, I make sure they sign off on it in the contract or whatever. Because once they get the ball, oh, they get the, oh, or, yeah, once they get whatever ball they get and they say, oh, well, this picture's horrible. We discussed this already. Here's where you signed off saying that you're okay with that. And I try to keep my communication between my customers strictly um, via email or text messaging or, or, or Facebook messaging. So there's written correspondence that goes along with with this because this is a very personal item and if it doesn't look exactly the way they envision it in their mind or they see another ball and they're like well it doesn't look like this one and you explain to them that the pictures weren't as good as good quality then you know but there are some pictures I just won't take like no there's nothing I could do with that so I just hold on just finished downloading so we'll do that in just a second okay so here are i think this is the first picture that you that i used for that one okay so the first thing i do again is grab my quick selection tool and let's see can we zoom in a little bit here and then i start from here try to get as close as I possibly can to everything they have it's gonna it may grab some other stuff in the background that's okay we're gonna fix that in a minute you go up here select the minus tool and then you tell it that this is the space right here and so as you see it took took all those lines out and so we want to take the wall out so we're going to bring it's with it still on the minus we're going to bring that up there okay go back to the plus sign it took some of his leg out we don't want that. So everything that you see that is selected, when you hit add a, add a mass layer, it's going to cut out everything that's not selected. And so now you have go back up here to the move tool now you have just the picture by itself okay and now you're able to shrink it down and put them inside the slice okay here's my one of my first so now that we so this is what I do we're working on this slice so I pull everything down with that slice these are turned off and we're only working with this so the first thing I do is go ahead on and group it and say left slice. Repeat, just so I know that. Left slice repeat, okay? So now I have all that grouped together and I know that when I open this up that I'm only working on this slice. So, um, We added a background to this, okay? 
as you see so what I'm going to do is say say YouTube channel if I can okay so it may not be the same because I don't remember where I got that from black starry night background okay let me just pick a nice one it's so particular and I want to get as close we'll just do this one I like to get as close as I possibly can but I may or may not of the original one that I used and hopefully I don't make it look better than when I made it look the first time but that may be an issue too so we'll just do, we'll just do that one and I just copy the image I could save it but I just copy it okay. and then edit paste okay and move this to this okay and we moved it between the photo and the actual background layer because we're going to clip it to that so this is so you um, right click on it and you create a clipping mask now the background is now you see the little arrow right here and it made it the full background of this So you see that so now we have this as the full background and we're gonna go add some words um, text and that's pretty big so we're gonna drop it down to like 18 and we're gonna say something like we are one okay change the color to white so we can see it okay make it larger and um, again pull the text down to where we're working well, I want to, but I closed it, didn't I? Okay. So, on the text, you can you double click. If you want to change the color, the font. Yeah, because I got black. Okay, so let's change it to this font. And I'm not going to, and it's not going to be exactly like the one that I did. I'm just giving you some ideas and the ways that I got to that point. Um, I really should have did a video while I was creating the ball, but it was for Christmas and I was on crunch time and I had to go. So, um, click the check mark. All right. Then we're going to go to. Oh, click the check mark. Sorry. Then we're gonna go to the tool. We're gonna bevel and emboss, give it some dimension, and you may not be able to see it, but it's there. Add an outer glow and change my outer glow color to too dark oh let me change my building and boss color not even changing that sorry guys now let me change it now I gotta go back and change my building and boss color and here you go so you can see the spread you can see that it gets brighter you can change the size of it make it really bright you can change the opacity of it meaning how much you can see through it or not um, and then let's go back to my bevel and boss because I changed the color of this and it needs to be black. 
so we give heart and that's the outer bevel i could do an inner bevel and it looks a little bit better so you can see what i mean you see that there's a hard bevel on that and now we have words on it I'm gonna do the next do another slice and this is what that slice looks like before I do that do this so that's what that slice looks like and essentially what I did was place it in bed this is the picture again quick selection tool Make sure you're on the plus and not on the minus. That was the issue. Like different parts of their shirt so then I go to minus and I bring it in to fit the side of his neck to fit his hair his shoes that area between there and the area between his legs so you can not get as much of the hair as possible okay so that's about as much as I'm going to get And then create a layer mask and there we go okay I am good at Photoshop but I'm not the best but I'm good enough to get this done so if you know better ways or better techniques by all means use those um, there are millions of videos on YouTube about um, different things you could do in Photoshop so please by all means use those type in love background images and I just googled something that had the words love mm -mm. there's a good one it's not the same one but it's close enough oh there's the same one copy and go back to Photoshop and we're going to we're going to paste we're going to do the same thing again bring this layer in between the picture and the slice enlarge it right click create a clipping mask and now you have them inside and you 
made your own put them inside the slice so there you go this is essentially how I did this this is how I put this together for this particular ball and so you group everything together that you're working with and so middle slice repeat because I like I said I did this already okay all right so so you can see what the other one looks like This one, um, I'm going to actually show you how to do this one because this one, um, this one takes a little bit more technique than uh, the other ones that I've done, okay? So, I'm going to actually show you this one. So, we're at this slice now. this slice is not the right size so now we gotta fix it do edit contents again oh okay it's hmm, apparently it's right oh, okay so the sizing is, is is right okay uh looks a little bit big to me but we're just gonna do, we're just doing the design part so since i've already showed you previously how to get the um sizing right we're just going to go ahead into the designing part. Okay, so for this particular one, I think I picked... this why while I was actually creating it because it would have been so much better had I done it that way um, versus me trying to find this stuff again and, and it's hard it's impossible because I didn't save anything Might be close enough. How, how dang it? Okay. Copy image. All right, paste. That's probably it. I think this is it. Okay. So of course we enlarge it. Hold shift, pull from the corner, so the picture stays proportionate, right? And then we. I think I. I think I got it right here. And then of course, right click, create a clipping head. Okay. That's how we got to that point. File, bring in uh, the picture, which was this one. This one, I did not clip a lot. I did not take them out of the background. I liked the scenery that was in the back. 
and it looked like a moment that you should just contain or keep the entire moment as a creator you have to see beyond what your customer tells you and be able to create what they can't understand or what they're not thinking about we have to see that vision so i saw that this means that they went somewhere special together they were in a special place together i don't know what this scene is in particular but or uh, what they're saying to each other but i knew that i wanted to keep the background the water this i didn't want to take them out of this picture so what i did was i minimized it took this and also created a clipping mask so this is what you create you can stack several on top of each other so that's not a big deal but now you see these harsh lines here at the top and harsh line here at the bottom no problem you go to your eraser tool i turn down my opacity to about 60 65 maybe 70. um the flow means how fast it's erasing and um click on what you'll e be erasing which will be on the picture and i turn my brush up just a little bit and it says this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding you have to tell it yes that's a big big so let's turn it down a little bit that's pretty good so and then i just start kind of lightly erasing that harsh line so it looks like it's fading into that blue skyline and I do the same here I took it out and I think in this particular one I wanted that heart at the bottom so I think I moved it up and then I went back and I erased it just a little bit more so we could get that full picture of that heart and the top is okay because now it looks like you got a blue kind of skyline and then you have I'm so happy I found this particular background that I actually used you can see the blue skyline in the back and then you can see the heart under the bottom and it looks like it's under their feet and it's just a little bit of erasing in Photoshop and you blend it two pictures together that's it that's how I got to that point so I'm kind of glad you got to see that and then I put their names at the top so you can see Put their name at the top and then I put the date that they started dating and that's how we got to this point so and that essentially is it and this is what the force device looked like and I basically did the same thing I picked the background that was color close to the shirts they were wearing and this was the picture the original picture I just took the whole thing clipped it in and then put it in put some words in there added some um, effects to it and I took the eraser tool and blended them together and there we go voila and then you get the bot the video the TikTok video that I posted you can go see that video I probably probably link it at the top somewhere in the little white banner that shoots across the top of the video but this is how I got this slice and when I got ready to print you put two slices on there together and you print the two and I just hand cut them out I didn't do anything fancy just hand cut them out and and did the same method that I showed you on the first video on how I do basketballs on how I did it. This video is basically 
a designer video, not actual how I put it on the basketball video. Um, but yeah, that's how I designed these and created created the slices that go on the basketball in Photoshop. In my opinion, I like Photoshop better because I'm able to fade and do a lot more with the words and create a better effect with the designing of the ball versus just cropping a picture out on the ball and so on and so forth. Uh, I like uh, cricket. As I said previously, it does not do a very good job at allowing you to design. It does not. And then and then on top of everything is it doesn't allow me to print it out. So there's that. Um, or I have to save it as something else and then open it up into silhouette to to print it. And I'm like, why not just design it in silhouette to begin with? Why I got to design design it in Cricut and then take it over to Silhouette just to do, you might as well just start and finish in the same program, why do all of that, but that's just my opinion, it's not anybody else's um, and that's how I get this here in Photoshop so another question that I always get is what do I seal with what materials are in the description of what I seal with and I may do a sealing video. I don't know. But basically what I do is I lightly seal with Rust-Oleum Clear about six times. And why six times? Because I'm lightly doing it. Very lightly. Because as it seals, it's going to be more shrinking. You're wetting the paper. You may see some bubbling. But once it completely dries it'll all go away so I just lightly do it and it takes me about six times before it stick and it has a very clear finish and everything looks like it's supposed to look so that is how you design in Photoshop if you guys have any questions put them in the description don't forget to like and subscribe um, I try to upload as much as possible, but there are times where I'm just super busy. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I try to be everywhere. I have my own Facebook group if you want to join it. I just started it, so it's not where it needs to be yet. Um, and oh, of course, follow me. I have, I have a business page on Facebook. And I have my regular page. And I will usually post on my regular page before I post on my business page. Sorry. I just do. So follow me everywhere. I'm trying to be everywhere where you guys can find me. If you'd like to place an order for anything, please go to my website to place orders. Um, creationsbymk.com um, I think that's everything. Alright, you guys. Until the next video. See you next time.